All right. Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto your elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and sincerity. I'm your brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. And Lord's willing, this lesson here is edifying. One way that we, and that, that we is us being the hopeful elect, one way that um, we are being dressed and furnished and purged, it's through tribulation and different things that we end up going through within our daily lives, being those servants of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. And there's things that we go through. There's things that we experience, different tribulation, like it was mentioned, hell that we catch. All right, and that's for our betterment. Now, here within this lesson, I'm going to touch up on that. But the aspect that I'm going to go into is the time that's getting ready to come. As we're being tested daily. All right, as we're rehearsing these different things daily, there's going to come a time when we're going to actually have the true test. And that true test is going to be during the hour of hour of uh, temptation, that great time of tribulation that our father Daniel talks about, that our that our fathers, the prophets talk about that great time of tribulation, Jacob's trouble. And we're going to have to endure through that. And if we are of the elect, we're going to endure through it anyway. We're going to be benefited by the Heavenly Father. But it's going to be a time like no other. And we see the buildups to this. We see what this what this devil is doing systematically. We see as they're using this novel, this novel virus, all right, coronavirus. All right, they're using they're using this to push fear. All right, they're using this to push fear. And one of their solutions that they're talking about is stabbing and jabbing. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, which ultimately that is going to lead to the mark of the beast. But we see what they're doing. They're putting their attention here toward these poor people, which you Israelites are the poorest in the totem pole. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And just here recently, and in, in, um, I almost said Dallas, but it's really the whole state of Texas. We're going through uh, what's considered an Arctic blast, I believe. All right. And when you go into this, this whole state has been frozen over for like almost the past week. And we see that um, these different grocery stores are out of food now. Or when you look at the grid here, electrical grid, these different areas that are without electricity, and without food and water are namely directed toward the poor areas. Now, obviously, you got Edomites, you got a lot of people that are without down here. It's not solely just you Israelites, but on the grid, these areas that are shut off are areas where it is predominantly Israelites. So ultimately where I'm getting at is we see we see a pattern of different things that are taking place and things that they're doing to aim at the poor of you tribes. All right. And this is going to be the true process to show if we are of the Lord's. All right. Now, I was reading this yesterday. And this is what I want to go into here. This is in the book of John, the 15th chapter. And I'm going to start from the top. Now, the key point is in verse two. All right. Because again, this is going into us being tried, us being purged. OK. And I mentioned earlier, the Lord puts us through a, a, a sequence. Let me turn this alert off. Turn these alerts off. The Lord puts us through a sequence of events to try us. All right. Even in our daily lives, whatever tribulation, whatever hell that we go through and catch ultimately is the heavenly father trying us. All right. And that ultimate time of trying is going to be when Jacob's trouble happens. Now, again, I'm going to read this here in John 15 and it reads, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Now, Yahweh Shai is speaking here. And when you read this here in John chapter 15, verse 1, Yahweh Shai 
talks about himself as being the true vine. All right. He is the true vine ultimately because you got all these scriptures that goes into the vine. All right. And the vine is also the lifeline of a, of a plant or a tree. All right. In order for the branches to sprout and the fruit to grow, it needs to have a vine that's rooted first. OK, it needs that foundation. And Yahweh Shai said he is the true vine. He is the true foundation. And he said, my father is the husbandman. Now, when you go into a husbandman, a husbandman is one that cultivates land. All right. That is the job of a husbandman. All right. The one that plants the seed, the one that cultivates the land. All right. The husbandman has the power. All right. To plant and he has the power to pluck up that which was planted. All things are given into the hands of Yahweh Shai, but all things are still done through the father. All right. He is the foundation of our faith. He's the foundation of everything, of existence itself. Yahweh, the heavenly father. And even Yahweh Shai here acknowledged that Yahweh is the true husbandman. And again, the husbandman is one that cultivates the land. All right. It's his spirit that is within us. It's his spirit that is within the angels. It's his spirit that is within Yahweh Shai. It's his spirit that literally bounds and controls everything and sets it in its arrangement. All right. Now, when you read this here in verse two, it says this. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. All right. Now, Yahweh Shai said he is the true vine. And then you have those branches that are part of that vine. And we represent those branches and those that claim to be those branches or those that might have been in that number of four time. The Heavenly Father has power to take those branches away and it's going to go into this. All right. Because, again, he is the husbandman. And also it was read earlier that Yahweh Shai is the true vine. All right. Now, there is a precept that I want to go to real quick. And again, just bear with me because the main point is coming up in regards to the purging process. All right, because it is the husbandman that has the power and the ability to even purge a tree. OK, so keep that in mind as well. Now, I'm going to read this here in the book of Psalms, chapter 80. And I want to start at a good point. I'm going to start at verse eight. All right. And it says, thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. All right. Now, this vine ultimately goes into us. But Yahweh Shai said he is the true vine. All right. And it's also a precept in Hosea that says, I am the Lord, that God that came with the Lord that came out of Egypt. All right. Because Yahweh Shai did come out of Egypt. All right. As he went into the land of uh, Nazareth and dwelt in that region. He dwelt in Egypt for a period of time. All right. And Joseph. And Mary, his father and his mother, had fled there when you read that in the book of, uh, I believe it's in Matthew, the second chapter. Fled there because the men children in Bethlehem were being persecuted by Herod. Okay. So when you read this here, it says, Thou hast brought us a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou prepared room before it and didst cause it to take deep root and filled the land. All right. Now, mind you, Yahweh Shai said he is the true vine. The hills were covered with the shadow of it and the bows thereof were like the goodly cedars. Now, when you go into the bows, another name for bows are branches. All right. So Yahweh Shai is the true vine and the elect are the branches. All right. But I wanted to bring out that precept just to show you. All right. Yahweh Shai goes into that vine. All right. And us being those branches, Lord's willing word of the elect, that ultimately goes into the governing body pretty much all right and those that dwell in the shadow of it are going to be protected it says she sent out her bowls unto the sea and her branches unto the river all right but again i just wanted to go into that as a precept to the book of john 15 where yahweh shai said i am the true vine all right he says i am the true vine and my father is the husbandman okay so back in verse 2 in john 15 it says Every branch in me that beareth not fruit is taken away. All right. And those branches are those bows. And those that don't do their job and that are taken away are ultimately those that don't bear fruit. Okay. You got a lot of guys that claim 
to be part of the foundation. You got a lot of guys that are calling the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai that aren't right. You got guys that are out there that claim to be Israelites, that claim to believe. But ultimately, they don't have the fruit to show. They don't have the fruit to bear. Guys telling you to take Maxine. Guys saying the name of the Lord doesn't matter. And these are all individuals that claim to be of their true vine, but they're not. Okay, now they serve their purpose. Hey, and even in regards to these other camps, there's certain brothers that are within the fold that might have listened to these camps at a period of time. And they were brought unto the true foundation, the truth, which we believe is through the tutelage of our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, ultimately through the spirit. And a lot of us had listened to these different guys and such, and that brought us into the truth. I mean, I, I being honest, when I first came in this thing before, I used to listen to um, GOCC. Just using that as an example, but ultimately, through me listening to them, the spirit led me here where I'm at today. All right. And ultimately, those different branches are going to serve their purpose for a period of time. All right. But their ultimate objective is to be broken off and be added to the fire. That way, the tree can flourish and the tree can grow. OK. Now, when you continue here. In the book of John 15, when you continue in verse two. It says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. All right. And that's the point. And I know the lesson's kind of been going on before I got into that point. But I wanted to start at the beginning to help display the picture that's being painted. All right. With Yahweh Shai being the vine and the servants being the branches. All right. And those that are true, all right, are going to be cultivated by the husbandman who is the father. And one way that the Father or Yahweh cultivates us, all right, or cultivates this vine is the matter of purging, all right? And that's the only way that that branch can be proven to be true, is it has to be purged and shaken up, all right, to see if it's going to, going to continue to bear that fruit after it's shaken and after what's been put on there is plucked, all right? It says, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth. That it may bring forth more fruit. All right. Now, in this lesson, I said earlier that one way that the Most High is going to fulfill that purging is through deep tribulation that's going to take place. All right. And that's how we are going to be purged. We're purged every day. But when Jacob's trouble comes, we're already experiencing things with 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 COVID. We're already experiencing things with this winter stuff that's going on and there's more things that are going to build up to ultimately this infrastructure collapsing all right and this is something that the elect are going to endure through but with this what we're going to have to go through it's going to be tough it's going to be trying sometimes because even in this time since we know who we are there's going to be people that are going to come up against us as the scriptures say and that is ultimately part of that purging process all right, as it happened to Yahweh Shai, it's going to happen to us as well. The servant isn't greater than his master. Now I'm going to read this in the book of Daniel, the 11th chapter. And I believe it's in verse 35. It's the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 35. And it reads, And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them. And to purge and make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. And when you go into this time here that's appointed, it's really going into Esau coming up against us. All right. Now, really, when you read Daniel, the 11th chapter, ultimately, it goes into the, the, the breakdown of it. Ultimately, is going into the Syrian wars. All right. And when you go into that, it's also a breakdown touching up on what had taken place in the Maccabees. And you can read about that in the Maccabees where there was a, a wicked root in the line of Seleucid, which Seleucid was one of the four generals of Alexander. And that wicked root in that line being Antiochus, he came up against us. All right. He came up against us and he def had the temple defiled. And you can read about, you can read about all that in the book of Maccabees. All right. But when you read Maccabees, when you go into it, that was a time that the true believers were being purged and made white. Where you get the Maccabean revolt, those that didn't offer that swine's flesh on the altar, those that were constantly being harassed and such by Esau Edom. All right. 
that was a time where we were being purged and made white. All right. And the men of the Lord, those that stood stiffly for the Lord, shined and they fought for the Lord. OK. Now, when you go back in verse 35, it says, and some of them of understanding shall fall and try them. And that's even like what's going to take place here very soon. There's going to be men of understanding that are going to fall in the flesh. But those are going to be the first ones that are risen up and not even just men, but women, too, and children. There's going to be martyrs that believe in the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And the Lord is going to put them through, through particular trials, and some of them might be to death. But again, as it's written of in 1 Thessalonians 4, those are going to be the first spirits that are going to be risen back up. Okay. Now, when he continue, it says, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. So it said even into the time of the end. And we're approaching that time of the end, that time of the end that our fathers talked about. This is the most anticipated time that existence has been waiting, waiting for. And that's the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai spoke about the things that was going to happen before he came. He spoke about how some of us were going to get cast into prison. Some of us were going to be put to death to be martyrs. He talked about all these different things. But at the end of the day, with Yahweh Shai being the vine and Yahweh being the husbandman, one that cultivates it, that is a way that the father purges the branches so they bring forth more fruit. All right. It's the shakening. It's the tribulation. Matter of fact, this leads me to another precept here in the book of Malachi, the third chapter. And again, it's not even just for us men, but there's going to be some of us, some of you women, when I say us talking about Israel, but some of you women that are going to be tried. OK. The thing about it is it's going to be Jacob's trouble. All right. Just as us men have our positions have our lots that we're going to have to fulfill. Some of us aren't going to taste of death. Some some men that believe are going to taste of death. All right. There's going to be some men that are that's belief is going to be tried at the spot when death is put in front of them. Just just to truly see if they believe in that. All right. But the same thing with you women. OK. And not every not every woman. There's going to be women that are going to get beamed up in the chariots. There's going to be children that are going to get beamed up in the chariots. But there's also going to be women and children. That are going to end up having to be martyrs for this thing. And that's going to be it's going to be a, a reward coming for that. Now, this is the book of Malachi, the third chapter. And I'm going to start from the top and it says, behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And this messenger is talking about John the Baptist. OK, it says. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom he delight in behold he shall come saith the lord of hosts and this was um done in the book of matthew the third chapter when yahweh shai went unto john the baptist to be baptized okay now when he continue in verse two it says but who may abide the day of his coming and this is ultimately going into his second coming and even john the baptist had to come back again as abba bivens as we believe he came back again because when he read it in Malachi, the fourth chapter in the fifth verse, the fifth or the sixth verse, it goes into how the before the great and dreadful day, John, uh, Elijah, the prophet was going to come back. All right. And Elijah, the prophet was John the Baptist. And we believe John the Baptist was Abba Bivens. Now, when you go back to Malachi, the third chapter in the second verse, it says, but who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. And that refining fire, it's ultimately talking about Yahweh Shai. And really, when you read this here in Malachi, the third chapter is really a direct precept to Matthew three. Because when John the Baptist was speaking, he said that, you know, he said, behold, I baptize with water. But he who's coming after me shall baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. And that's that refiner's fire that Yahweh Shai came to baptize with. And that starts with the word. It starts with the spirit because the word is likened unto a fire. All right. And only those that are willing to receive the word are going to be baptized with that. All right. 
So when you continue, it says, and he is like a fuller's soap. And a fuller is one who has the profession of washing clothes. Back in the ancient world, I've done lessons on this, but it's a very tedious process to wash those clothes. You didn't obviously didn't have the washer and the dryer back then. All right. You would have to actually get a cloth or a garment set on a rock, constantly beat it, throw it back in the water, tread upon it with your feet, put it back on that surface and constantly strike it and beat it in order to get those stains out. And he's likening this refinest fire and this fuller soap to Yahweh Shai's baptism. And this is a baptism that we all have to be baptized with. OK, and that baptism ultimately is the father cultivating us, purging us. As it said in John, the 15th chapter. And one way that it's going to take place when it's hard times out here, very hard times out here. Even the Apostle Har had done a lesson back of uh, some months back going into hard times make hard individuals and soft times make softer individuals. And that throughout time, when things have gotten easier, people have more of a microwave mentality they didn't have to hunt for food no more do particular things we've all gotten softer as a people living under the banner all right or living under the society i'd rather word it of esau edom everybody's gotten soft that's why when you see these snowstorms hit people don't know what the hell to do they take they buy up all the food they lose their minds they literally lose their minds back in the ancient world people were used to this people didn't have air conditioning they didn't have heat you know they had to make fires they had to do particular things and they were more they, they were bred to to endure more things all right so this time that's coming is getting ready to be like how we was before and we're gonna have to uh, snap into a slim gym very quick if we expect to endure until the end that ancient mindset has to be in us that holy mindset has to be in us because in order to have that true ancient mindset to endure, you have to have a holy mindset in you. All right. You have to think back at those men of old, those accounts of old, how they were able to endure through those tough situations. And all of it takes faith and fear in the Lord. And within that, we've been given a guideline, the scriptures and understanding to be able to go back to these things and see it so we can fashion and model ourselves afterwards, especially when times of trouble come. Now, when you jump back to Malachi, the third chapter, in verse two, it says, but who may abide in the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. So when Yahweh Shai comes back before he fully comes back, it's going to be a troublesome time that's coming. And it's likening his return to a fire and a fuller's soap. And I explained what that fuller's profession was. All right. Verse three says this. And he shall sit as a refiner. And purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi. Now, when it says the sons of Levi, this really is more of just an allegory unto the elect, the holy priesthood. All right. The reason why I considered them the sons of Levi is an allegory because those Levites were the ones who had to who had the particular duty of sacrifice, um, being in the temple, doing particular things in the house of the Lord. So when you read this here, it's going into an allegory. Of Yahweh Shai purging us, purging his elect, Lord's will and were of that number. All right. And really going into it in John 15, Yahweh Shai is divine and his baptism and his word that he spoke was like a fire. But ultimately, the words that he speak ultimately comes from the heavenly father, who's the true source. All right. So reason why I mention that, because in John 15, it explained the father to be the husbandman. And the husbandman, again, is the one that cultivates the land. He is the one that takes out the branches. He's the one that purges the ones that don't bear that fruit. And when this troublesome time comes, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be plucked out and burned. A lot of people that claim to be part of the uh, part of that number. A lot of people that claim to be part of this this testimony, part of this body. They're going to be plucked out and they're going to be burned. And it's ultimately the will of the Heavenly Father because he is the husbandman and is going to be exposed when that time comes. All right. A lot of people are going to be exposed. So when you jump back to verse three, it says, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. 
So what we're about to endure through, what we endure through every day, but what's getting ready to come is ultimately forced to glorify the name of the Father. And there's going to be fruit that is going to be there, the Salakim. There's going to be fruit that's going to be bore after that, during this. All right, a lot more fruit is going to be bore. Okay, hey man, you read it um, in the book of uh, Isaiah 59. It says, when an enemy shall come unto you like a great flood, then shall the Lord lift up that standard. He's going to bring that upgrade and people are going to see and are going to be amazed. All right. Hey, as is written of in Psalms 110, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. It's going to be a lot of fruit that's produced when you endure through these tough times, when you endure through this tribulation. And ultimately, it's the father just working. It's the heavenly father doing these things that he said that he was going to happen because, again, as I said before, he is the husbandman and that husband's that husbandman's job is to is to shake up the branches. All right. So it'll bear more fruit. Now, this is in the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. And I'm going to start at verse one and I'm going to jump to verse 10. This is Daniel 12 and one. Salakia. And it reads. And at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince that standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble as never was since there was a nation even the same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. And those are those branches. Those that are found written in the book are those branches that bore that fruit in John 15. All right. Those are those ones that bore that fruit that was purged by the heavenly father. In order to endure until the end, you're going to have to suffer. You're going to have to endure. And part of that enduring is that purging. All right. And purging also, another name for it is separating. All right. Or, or sanctifying. And it was explained earlier in Malachi 3 that a way that's going to happen is the fire that's going to come. And that fire is likened unto tribulation. All right. Hey, that's why the apostle Peter said, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial that is meant to try you. All right, because in our daily lives in this walk, there's very strange things that happen unto us, things that are almost unexplainable. But then you have to sit back and understand that it's the heavenly father trying us. All right, we're being purged. And ultimately, when that time of trouble comes, as it was just read right here, that's going to be the true test, as I had mentioned it earlier. And those that endure unto the end are those that are going to be found written in the book. Now, I said I was going to jump to verse 10. But I wanted to read verse one to establish the point that right here, it's touching up on the time of trouble that's getting ready to come. And I said in this lesson, all right, I read it in John 15, how the most high is going to purge those branches. And I mentioned that 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 ultimate way that those branches are going to be purged is when Jacob's trouble comes. All right. That's when the elect are going to be found elect and precious. All right. Daniel uh, 12 and 10, it says, many shall be purified and made white and tried. And again, when you go into that, that is that purging process. And it was just written this also, too, in Daniel, the 11th chapter, going into how they were going to be purged and made white even into the time of the end. So now here in Daniel 12, it's going into the time of the end right here where it says many shall be purified and made white, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. All right. So many are going to be purified and made white. And that is going to come in a time that's like no other. When the enemy is going to come up against us like a flood. All right. All this is going to happen. All this is going to have to take place because the scriptures say it. All right. All this is meant to try us. OK. And I end this off here in the book of Second Ezra, the 16th chapter. And I'll start at verse 68. Just to bring this point home, going into that time of Jacob's trouble, that time, no other, that's going to be the supreme part, the ultimate part of our purging. OK, the ultimate part of Israel's purging is going to be when those troops come. Because I read it earlier again in Daniel 11, going into it says some of them of understanding shall fall and try them. All right. And how are they going to fall? They're going to fall because people are going to try to come up against us. 
people are going to come up against the believers. And that's why I want this here in 2 Ezra chapter 16. And I said, I'm going to start at verse 68. 2 Ezra 16 and 68 reads this. Hold on. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And they shall take you away, certain of you, and feed you being idle with things being offered unto idols. And that actually happened when you read Maccabees. All right. Antiochus was hot. He was mad. And he had sent a, a troop of Edomites over to the Holy Land and purged and purged and literally burnt it and defiled it and offered swine's flesh. And the swine's flesh was was offered unto their idols, was offered unto Jupiter, Saturn, those different idols that they had worshipped. And they were forcibly having Israelites eating that. And there were certain Israelites that willingly did it. All right. And as that had taken place back then, it's going to happen all over again. You're going to have Edomites that are going to force you, that are going to try to force you to take that chip. And we already see it being done in a level with the with, with Maxine. All right. And this is just a test trial for the ultimate fulfillment of them wanting to put a chip inside of you. All right. And this is an idol at the end of the day, man. This, this goes back into their idol worship. This goes back into their gods that they worship. All right. I did a lesson a while back where it says Meriduck is broken in pieces. And Meriduck was a serpent deity. All right. Of the Babylonians. And he had a, a, a spade in his hand. And that spade was meant for stabbing. All right. And that's Esau's MO at the same time wanting to cut you. So that's namely what they're going to try to do here. Just as they tried to do it with that pork back then because of their burning wrath. It's going to be the same way. The same way here. That's why it's written in Revelation. The devil shall come down upon you because he knoweth that he has a short time. And he's going to come down with burning wrath. I mean, look at Esau's time. He had rule and America was booming. He had his time on the planet Earth. Now he sees the chariots. He sees the prophets prophesying. He's mad right now. So he's going to come down with burning wrath because he knows he has a short time. Verse 69 says this. And they that consent unto them shall be in derision and then reproach and trodden underfoot. So you're going to have people that are going to consent. You have people that are consenting to Maxine right now. Look, Jake is easily consenting to Maxine. Look at General Johanna. He's easily consenting to Maxine. These guys that don't have faith in the names of the Lord as their um, their um, foundation. When I say the names of the Lord, name the names of Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. So I'd rather word it like that. If you don't have those names and you have no foundation and these guys are going to be shown that they don't have that. All right. People are going to consent when the mark of the beast happens, just as you had wicked men in the time of Maccabees that consented to that pork. Verse 70 says this, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. And also really quick, I want to jump back because there was a point that I wanted to mention here in verse 69 as well. Because it said, and them that consent unto them shall be had in derision and reproached and trodden underfoot. Hey, those are those branches that the heavenly father had plucked out of that vine. Those are those branches that didn't bear that fruit. So they're plucked out of the vine and they were thrown into the fire. OK, I want to bring that point out as well. And it says, for there shall be in every place in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Now, what is this insurrection like unto that flood that's read about in Isaiah 59, where it says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, then the Lord shall lift up a standard. That flood goes into that insurrection. All right. And that insurrection ultimately is the heavenly father allowing this to happen for us to be tried. All right. Hey, you read it in Revelation. Matter of fact, I'm going to get this. It's in the book of Revelation, the third chapter, in the 10th verse. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now, the thing about it, this is the heavenly father that has the power to bring this. All right. Just as he has the power to bring this, he has the power to keep us from the hour of temptation. All right. And he's doing this to try the world. All right. And that world, what was that world first and foremost? It starts with Israel. All right. Israel is the world without end. 
So Israel is going to have to go through a time of Jacob's trouble. And those that believe out of Israel was a remnant are going to endure unto the end. All right. And those are those that were cultivated by the father and purged to bring forth more fruit. And it starts with the prophets. All right. Namely, it starts with the prophets. OK. Those are going to be them that are purged and made white. That's why in Malachi, the third chapter, it likened them to being the sons of Levi, which ultimately goes into the holy priesthood, which ultimately goes into the house of the prophets. OK. So I want to jump back down to second Ezra 15. Because it says there shall be that insurrection that's going to come. And it's the Heavenly Father that's going to allow the insurrection to happen. And as he's allowing the insurrection to happen, he is also going to keep that elect from the hour of temptation. But in the midst of that, the elect are going to have to be purged. Because this is part of the Heavenly Father's cultivating. All right. What we're reading about in Second Ezra 16 is a part of the Heavenly Father cultivating that vine. All right. Verse 72 says, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known whom are my chosen and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. You see, then shall they be known who are my chosen. So it's going to have to take this insurrection to take place for the chosen to ultimately be known. And when that insurrection happens, that is when the Lord is going to lift up that standard. That's when the Lord is going to lift up that standard, but it's going to start with the fire that's going to have to take place. All right. It's going to be a shakening of those branches that are going to have to happen in order for that branch to declare that perfect fruit. And that leads me to this final precept here in Sirach 27. KJV. I believe it's in Sirach 27. This is Sirach 27 and 5. It reads, the furnace proveth the potter's vessel. All right. And again, that furnace is that fire. And the only way for us to, to be found, those precious, those precious individuals are those that have to go through that fire. All right. That's why I said many shall be purified and made white. And it also said it in um, Daniel 11, they're going to be purged and made white. All right. And that white ultimately goes into being made pure. So Sirach 27 and 5 says the furnace proved the potter's, the, the potter's vessel. So the trial of man is in his reasoning. And there goes that trial again. Now, here's the key point in verse six. The fruit declared if the tree had been dressed. All right. And what is the dressing process? That's the purging process. That's the cultivating process. And who is the one that cultivates and purging? Who, who is the husbandman as pertaining to John 15? That's the heavenly father. All right. So the fruit declare it that the tree has been dressed. All right. And those that don't bear that fruit are going to be broken out and thrown into the fire as it was written of in John 15. And the ultimate part of that is going to be when Jacob's trouble happens. That's how the servants are going to be ultimately known as it was written of in 2nd Ezra 16. All right. And just just to, just to go back to that, I'm going to read that one more time. I'm going to read that one more time in 2nd uh, Ezra 16. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 16, and I believe that was in verse 72. 2nd Ezra 17, 16 and 73. Then shall they be known whom are my chosen. So it's going to come when the Lord sends that flood. All right. It's going to come when the Lord sends that insurrection. That's how people are going to know who are the most highs chosen. That makes me think of wisdom of Solomon five. It goes into how many are going to see and they're going to bear witness to the sons of God being delivered. And they're going to cry and groan in their spirit. Matter of fact, I know I said I'd end it off there, but the spirit's telling me to get this. Because we got a reward coming, y'all. This is part of that reward. So why not talk about the reward that's going to come? All right. The Lord got a lot of stuff prepared for us, man. And it's coming soon. So this is Wisdom of Solomon 5. All 
And this is in verse one. It says, then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, all right, because it said, then they shall see whom are my chosen. Then they shall know who are my, my chosen. All right. It says, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. And what is that terrible fear? The fact that the Lord is lifting up that standard. All right. And they're going to realize there's going to be nothing that they can do. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. Men are going to get powers. All right. Men are going to get beamed up into those chariots. All right. And not even just men that are going to get beamed up, but women and children, too. All right. But salvation, it doesn't only accompany the chariots that are coming. Now, that is going to be the fulfillment of it. But part of that is going to be when the Lord lifts up that standard. All right. And has those miraculous wonders that take place. The Lord is going to save us from our enemies. All right. Hey, man, you got to think about it. When those different troops come, look at those ancient examples that happened to our fathers. When you read it in Second Kings in the sixth chapter, when Elisha and his servant was compassed about with that army of those Syrians, all right, there was a host of chariots that appeared in the sky and it had smitten those men with blindness. That was an example of salvation there. Elisha and his servant was saved right there at that moment. All right. When Gideon, when you read in Judges, when Gideon and those different service, servants that didn't lap when they drunk that water, those 300 when those troops came, when those when when our enemies came and they were they were plagued, all right, to fight one against another and killed one another. That was an example of salvation. So when it says when they see it, that doesn't only mean the chariots. Now, definitely that goes into the chariots, but that doesn't only just mean the chariots. All right. Because when they see men get power and do strange things, they're going to be in fear with that. Hey, that sister had that dream. When those troops had put her in that barn and they was getting ready, they, they was trying to fight her and trying to rape her and such. She said she had a dream that one of the brothers came and, and, and murked all those guys and she was saved. OK, hey, man, it says in Obadiah, Savior shall come out of Zion. OK, so again, the salvation doesn't only come by way of the chariots. Now, that is going to be the ultimate fulfillment of us being saved. Well, really, it was what Yahweh shy. It was what Yahweh saw already putting him, being put on that cross. All right. But what comes with what Yahweh Shai had done? Power is going to come. The chariots are going to come and deliver. All these things are going to happen due to Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. So I'm going to go back to the point. It says, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they looked and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say in themselves, this was he whom we had had sometimes in derision and a proverb and a reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How was he numbered among the children of God and his lot among the saints? All right. And those are going to be those. <laughs> those are going to be those who was dressed by the father, purged by the father and bore fruit by the cultivating of the father. Those are going to be those that endure unto the end, tried, purged. Those are the fruit that remain, as the scriptures say. So I want to end it off on that. Lord's willing, this lesson was edifying and comforting. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots and all truth and sincerity. Shalom.